Hey everybody. You know, got a little bit of, first of all, I'm going to talk about Raw in a little bit, but I also want to talk a little bit of WWE news in case you guys haven't heard about this yet. Um, John Cena, who competed last night as well as competed at Night of Champions, uh, this morning, this morning, uh, got surgery done on his elbow. Now, it's not major surgery. Basically, it's the kind of surgery that all they had to do was remove bone chip fragments from his elbow. Now, apparently, from what a lot of people who've responded to this through comments at Lords of Pain dot, the places like Lords of Pain dot net and a few other sites, basically, John Cena is going to probably have something like a scar or something like that. No sling, no nothing like that. If you have a scar or everything, but it shouldn't prevent him from getting in the ring for some promo work. In other words, he won't miss any television time. He won't be sidelined or anything. He'll be doing some rehab, that is true, but he won't be sidelined. And they're estimating about two to three weeks before he can physically get back in the ring. So if you're a John Cena fan or a fan out of respect, then there you go. Now I know a lot of people are probably wondering what exactly this means for the WWE Championship match scheduled possibly for Hell in a Cell. It doesn't mean a thing. Basically, still, I mean, basically, WWE is still going with it. They are still going with John Cena versus CM Punk. Unless something does come up where it's got to be extended, even past Hell in a Cell. But I seriously don't think so. The schedule, obviously, is for CM Punk to defend the title against John Cena inside the Cell. Hell, and possibly what could be one of the last matches for a while. What I'm estimating, anyway. Also, the news going around... In case some of you don't know, Randy Orton, who has been basically a babyface for the past few years, desperately, no, I'm not sure desperately, but has been talking about, and according to inside sources, has been throwing the idea around to turn him back into a heel. Now, WWE apparently wants to go in this direction. They want to turn Randy Orton heel. They do, apparently, from what reports have said. But, because... They are waiting for Sheamus to prove himself as the face of SmackDown, as the babyface, as the franchise player for that brand, as the world champion, prove that he could carry that show on his own. Only then will WWE decide to turn Randy Orton heel. Now, upon hearing this, a lot of fans have already said, well, Sheamus has already pointed out that Sheamus has been a face for about a year, over a year now been a face for over a year now, as well as the fact that he's been the Royal Rumble winner, he's been the world champ, he won the world title at WrestleMania, you know, it's like, what more do they need, it's like, what more do they need to ask of Sheamus, what more are they waiting for? Nobody really knows, nobody really knows, the only thing I can think of only thing I can think of is if Sheamus is still waiting for a certain time frame. The time frame I believe could be Survivor Series if they wanted to go Randy Orton heel turn before the end of the year. Because that's one of the estimations. Before the year's out, they want to turn him heel. So I would estimate either Hell in a Cell, which I seriously doubt though, but I also estimate possibly. Survivor Series could be the moment for Randy Orton's heel turn. Now, you might say to yourself, well, what if it doesn't happen by then? Well, of course everybody knows the WWE has an alternate plan. That alternate plan is for Dolph Ziggler to cash in, become World Heavyweight Champion, and then for Randy Orton to feud with him over the World Championship. And thus, meaning, eventually down the line, Randy gets the title back. But the, that is an alternate plan. The other plan, obviously, is for Sheamus and Randy to feud for the world title, which would obviously go back to what I mentioned uh, many videos ago, about a couple months, about a month, about two, three months ago. Well, basically, right after uh, Cena failed to cash in, the question that went through my mind is: WWE going to do the same, same thing with Dolph Ziggler? We don't know just yet, but. 
That's what's going on with someone like Randy Orton. He wants to be healed. People in WWE want to turn him heel, but they're waiting for Sheamus to finally prove he can carry SmackDown on his own. Which, I guess, is easier said than done. Now, as far as WWE Raw goes last night, I thought it was okay. I thought it was a good post edition of a post Night of Champions edition of Raw. I mean, it was great to see good old JR back on commentary. It was good to see JBL. And, you know, to me, a three man announced team on Raw works, especially if you, if you have the right people working off each other. And I do have to give Michael Cole credit. He, is, he has developed a lot, if you will. And it seems according to some people, that WWE seems to be turning him into sort of a middleman. In other words, someone that will side with the heel's point of view, but also side with the babyface's point of view. So sort of that tweener announcer that you need. Tweener face, if you will. Uh, we found out, basically, the main event was going to be Sheamus and Cena against CM Punk and Del Rio, with the possibility that whoever wins the match for the team, that person could be in line for a rematch. Now, I want to make sure I get this right. <laughs> um, again, like I said, I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, but basically, some of the matches we had last night, we actually started out with a tag team match. And the Off the Rope show, I have to give them credit too. They actually admitted something. They said it seems that WWE is trying to work on their tag division, trying to rebuild it. Well, that obviously comes from the news of what was reported weeks ago. Triple H wants to focus more on rebuilding the tag team division and less on the Divas division. Now, I know if you're a fan of the Divas division, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem fair. Well, that might be true, but if you look at it, I guess, from Triple H's point of view, the Divas division has more spotlight, it's been spotlighted more than the tag division. So Triple H, who has had experience in the tag division, obviously knows that it needs to be rebuilt. And that was basically the foundation of this company, one of them. So basically you had Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara beat Epico and Primo, and then you had the primetime players attack Mysterio and Sin Cara with the message that they're going to take what they want from now on. Okay, that seemed pretty well done. Also, you have Brodus Clay defeat Heath Slater in a match with basically the possibility that now we're going to get a Brodus Clay Antonio Cenzaro feud for the United States Championship. And if this is a way to get Brodus his first championship, it might be, it might be good. We're not really sure. We also had uh, Eve defeat Beth Phoenix uh, in a non-title match with Layla on commentary. And I do agree with a lot of people on this, especially, you know, a lot of people when they say this. It seems that even though Triple H wants to focus less on the Divas division, it doesn't mean he doesn't want to, you know, you know, completely ignore the division. And obviously they got something going here with a storyline. Um, a storyline that's evolving around how Eve got that title shot, you know, or how Caitlyn got injured and Eve ended up getting the title shot last uh, two nights ago at Night of Champions. So I like that even though Triple H wants to focus more on the tag division and less on the Divas division, he still has an eye on it to the point that he wants to put some kind of a storyline in there. And hopefully they don't drop the ball on that. Uh, we had Randy Orton taking on Tenzai. It was all right. Uh, Randy Orton defeated Tenzai. We had Dolph Ziggler defeat Santino. We had Damian Sandow beat Zack Ryder. We had the debut, or I guess you could say re-debut, and revamped debut of Miz TV with Booker T as Miz's first guest, as well as Ryback possibly being introduced as the next opponent for Miz. So that might be interesting there. Get Ryback his first title as, as well. Kind of go the Goldberg route, if you will. You know, let him finally win a, win a mid-card championship and then build his, you know, work his way up to that main event slot. Seems pretty good. I mean, I like the segment because, you know, you had Ryback tossing a lot of things out. He tossed, in case you missed it as well, he tossed the mic out, a live mic into the audience, and somebody caught it. It was yelling Goldberg, Goldberg a little louder 
than normal. Uh, security, from what I understand, had to chase the guy down, get the mic, but he didn't get ejected, which was kind of surprising. Uh, we also had a tag team title rematch between Daniel Bryan and Kane against R-Truth and Kofi Kingston. Uh, I thought this was an entertaining tag match. It was decent. It went a little longer, obviously, from what I understand, than the Night of Champions match did. And Kane and Daniel Bryan, they do retain. I'm starting to kind of like this team a little bit because, you know, they're kind of like an odd couple, if you will. You know, they can't get along, but yet they always find a way to win. I'm just hoping WWE doesn't decide to go in the direction of saying, okay, let's do what WCW did, and let's have the tag champions eventually feud with each other, with the winner, fa with them facing each other for the titles, and the winner choosing his partner. You know, kind of like what they did to it, Sting and the Big Show when Big Show was giant back in 1998. Uh, again, I'm hoping they don't go that route because I'm kind of liking this team of Kane and Daniel Bryan. I like it. It's really, it's really unique. It's, it's entertaining. It's funny at times. Um, I just wonder what kind of role Edge is going to play in this. Because if you haven't heard, tonight the SmackDown tapings, which will be aired on Friday on Sci-Fi, Edge is going to make an appearance. Um, then we get, then we kind of get the main event of the night, which is CM Punk and Del Rio against Sheamus. And, um, and John Cena. I thought it was an okay tag match. I thought it was alright. Um, John Cena does end up winning the match for his team, but under, just like the night before, under controversial, under controversial um, viewing, under controversial decision. Uh, basically what happened was, John, was CM Punk had his, after John Cena hit the AA, on CM Punk, CM Punk rolled over to the ropes so that when John Cena did cover him, uh, Cena, uh, Punk had his foot on the ropes. Now obviously this referee who's a new referee, um, his name is Maddox, uh, apparently it's his first main event match that he's done. And what I understand is he act, he's actually a wrestler. And I looked at this guy and I said to myself, you know what, the moment I saw what happened, the moment I saw something, something, hit, something clicked in my mind, like, this guy's going to play an integral role real soon. Because apparently he'd been a, uh, a referee down in the developmental as well, as well as a wrestler, where he's a former tag champion and a former uh, 15 champion. So it went through my mind, like, you know what? This guy's going to play an integral role. I wouldn't be surprised by that. So, uh, but overall... It seems that we are going to be building towards Hell in the Cell. Now, I know a lot of people have a, have a, you know, kind of shocked of how long the build is going to be. But when you think about it, when you think about it, in my honest opinion, I think with, when you think about it, WWE has always been accused of not making the Hell in the Cell match or even the event that it's centered around or the event that it's named after, you know, special. They've been missing out on the opportunity. It's always like, okay... Two weeks, it's like, okay, you have Night of Champions, and about two, two weeks later you have Hell in the Cell. Oh, it doesn't really mean much anymore. Or it's like, you have Vengeance, and then two weeks later you have in the cell, Hell in the Cell, and it doesn't mean anything. With the build that they got going for it now, in my opinion, somebody like maybe Triple H or whoever is rectifying that. They're making sure that the event itself and the matches that's named, and the, match, the, two, the matches that's named after, the Cell matches, will mean something. It will have some kind of impact. So, and honestly, in my opinion, I think when you take a look at the date, October 28th, I think they're going to try to make this the Halloween Havoc pay-per-view. That's what I feel. So, uh, but overall, I thought it was a decent Raw. I know some people may disagree with me and agree with me or not, but I thought it was okay. So, that's my opinion on it, and as well as giving you a little bit of news on what's going on with John Cena, Randy Orton, and even Edge. Uh, comment down below, tell me what you guys think, video response if you like. I'll talk to you all later.